convection it is the mode of transfer of heat due to actual movement of particles let this be a container container with water and this container is heated suitably means using flame so this is the flame heating now what happens that part of the liquid which is close to the bottom is heated first means this portion of liquid is heated it absorbs heat energy and temperature increases. Temperature increases means volume increases. Expansion. Volume increases means density is mass by volume. Volume increases, density decreases. So this warm water being lesser dense goes to the top and relatively cooler water sinks now this cold water is in contact with the bottom again it absorbs heat energy becomes warm less dense goes to the top and relatively cooler liquid sinks so there is transfer of heat throughout this liquid and that's because of convection current convection current and this is convection current there is movement of water molecules inside this container. So this is how liquids are heated. Fluids are heated. In general, fluids, both gases and liquids. Using convection, let us understand sea breeze, land breeze and trade winds. Let us understand one by one. Sea breeze. Sea breeze is observed during daytime. Observe the diagram. There is land, there is sea. Now, during daytime, temperature of land increases faster than temperature of sea water. And that's because of specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity of water is very high compared to land. That is why rising temperature of sea water is less. So this is heated faster and that part of air which is close to land absorbs heat energy after absorption density decreases it becomes light so this warm air rises as the warm air rises we can expect air from the sea this air which is close to the sea will absorb very little energy from the sea because temperature of sea water is less compared to say, temperature of land. So this relatively cooler air will move towards land and this warm air rises then it returns it sinks. So this cycle continues during daytime. And there is breeze from sea towards land. That is why it is called sea breeze. And it is a cold breeze, relatively cooler. Now, opposite of this is land breeze. If this is during daytime, land breeze will be during night times. Land breeze. During night times, this land mass loses heat energy faster than sea water. During daytime, it has absorbed heat energy, but during night time, land loses heat energy faster than sea water. Since it loses energy faster and this is warm, air closer to the sea, this air closer to sea, absorbs heat energy from the sea, expands, density decreases and this air rises. As this air rises, that region is filled by air from the land and that is land breeze and temperature of this air will be less compared to temperature of this air so that is why this air rises and this cooler air sinks so there is gentle breeze from land towards sea and this is land breeze see 
due to convection we can explain land breeze now third one trade winds trade winds earth axis of rotation you can see axis of rotation here and this is the equator equatorial region and we have already studied in our lower standard that equatorial region receives more sunlight than regions at the poles so this region receives more heat energy as a result temperature of this region increases as temperature increases air closer to the equator is heated faster than air closer to poles so this air absorbs more heat energy temperature increases density decreases and this air rises and this is not according to scale the air will not rise so much but to understand okay done so this warm air rises and that region is filled by air from polar regions so there should be breeze from polar regions like this in the southern hemisphere southern hemisphere means this half northern hemisphere means this half so air can go towards north pole or towards south pole okay so there is wind from the polar regions towards the equator this is how it should be but one more parameter we have to consider one more information we have to consider earth is rotating such a way that any region along the equator will be moving around 6 1600 1600 kilometer per hour each and every place is moving at this speed very high speed so because of this motion from west towards east instead of wind blowing from polar regions towards the equator the wind blows from somewhere close to 30 degree north towards the equator and in the southern hemisphere 30 degree south towards the equator it is supposed to be from the polar regions because of rotation of earth the wind will be from somewhere 30 degree north and 30 degree south towards the equator so wind will direction of wind is something like this and this change in direction and this wind can be explained using convection now here is a cool small animation of trade winds you can see flow is from 30 degree north towards the equator or 30 degree south towards the equator why these are called trade winds suppose this part is europe and this part is america a for america then natural flow natural wind direction is from europe towards america earlier sailboats during colonial expansion period what was the reason for colonial expansion main reason was trade they wanted to venture into sea for any possibility of trade or any possibility of finding new land mass isn't it so that is why these are called trade winds if there is a sailing boat here then that sailing boat is naturally pushed from europe towards america because of this wind so that is why the name trade winds isn't it beautiful yes we can explain trade winds using convection of heat